Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to learn how we can use Flask to create a library with books using object-oriented programming and Flask logic. Okay, so I've created a folder called Book Library and I've opened it in my terminal and in Visual Studio Code. First thing that we're going to do is create a virtual environment. So we'll say python 3 m v e m v and we'll just call it my e m v. Next, we're going to activate it. So source my env bin and then activate. And then we'll just install flask. And whilst this is happening, we'll come back over to our to Visual Studio Code. Here, we're going to create a templates folder and this will hold our index.html file. And then we're also going to create an app.py so that the app can run and we will create a library.py so this will be the logic that will handle all of the the books and the specific library so let's just make sure that this is all installed correctly perfect so if we come back over to here inside our app.py we are going to um, import flask so we say from flask import flask um, we'll also say request so that we can handle um, form input, render template, redirect, and URL4. And then here we'll just create a app variable and we'll set this equal to Flask. And then we will just create a route for our home route just to make sure that everything's working correctly. So we'll say app.route and we'll pass in a forward slash and then we'll create a function called index and this is just going to return render template of index.html and then at the bottom we'll say if name is double equal to main and then we'll say app.run and we'll pass in debug true um, so now we come over to here and we will create just a heading one just say hello world. Now if we run our app.py we now have a development server set up so if we come to this link here we should be able to see hello world which we do. Okay so now I've created a library.py um, file so inside this this is going to handle all of the the logic for books and for the library. So we'll start with um, a book and we'll create class and we'll call it book. And then we want to handle some um, variables when it's first initialized. So we'll pass in self. We obviously need each book to have its own ID. So we'll say book ID. And then we'll give it a title and an author. So now here we'll just say self.bookid is equal to bookid. And that means that whatever's passed in here can be accessed in other methods within this class. We'll then say self.title is equal to title and self.author is equal to author. Now, in the majority of programming languages, there is a to string function. So what we'll do is we'll just say def underscore underscore repr, which is short for representation. And we'll pass in self again so that we can access these variables up here. And we'll just return a string and we'll say book ID is equal to self.bookid title is equal to self.title and then author is equal to self.author so now this is our way of creating a book with its own book id and a title and an author now we need a library to hold all the books in so we'll say class library now we need to create an initialization method so this will just hold self because we're going to create 
of books that are associated to this library. So now we'll create a dictionary. So we'll say self.books, and that will just be an empty dictionary because when it's first created, it needs to be empty. And we'll say self.nextID is equal to one. Now, if we want to add a book, we're going to need obviously a title and an author. Now this next ID is going to be handling the book ID and every time we will increment the next ID by one. So here we'll say def add book, pass in self, title and author. And then we'll say book is equal to book and then self dot next ID, title, author. And we'll say self dot books at the index of self dot next ID is equal to this book variable that we've just created. And then we'll say self dot next ID plus equal one. So every time we have created a book, we'll store it inside this self dot books and then we'll increment next ID by one. And then here we can just return book. We also need a way to be able to get all of the books and to be able to list them all. So we'll say def get all books. And then in here we are just going to return a list of self.books.values. So we only want the values from this dictionary. We don't really need to know the um, the actual IDs of this of these books in this function. And then we are going to be deleting a book. So we'll say def delete book, pass in self and the book ID, because obviously you want to make sure that you are deleting the correct book. So we'll say if book ID in self.books, <clears throat> then we'll say del self.books, and then we'll pass in the book ID, and then we'll return true. And then outside of this, we will return false because obviously if, it, if it's not in the book IDs, then it's going to return false. So it's not been able to actually delete the book. Next, if we head back over to our app.py, we obviously need to be able to hand or use this logic inside of our app. So if we say from library, import library. So now, <clears throat> Now we can actually update certain things on our index function, but to use this library, we should actually call it. So when the app is first created, we will say library is equal to library, and this will create our instance of a library with no books and the next ID being one. And now inside our index, we can say books is equal to library dot get all books and then we can pass in books so that we can actually access this variable inside our index.html now <coughs> sorry now if we try to access it because it's an empty variable we won't actually be able to get anything back so <coughs> what we'll do is we'll create a new uh, root for adding so we say app dot root and this will take us to the root of forward slash add we say def add and then here we'll say title is equal to request dot form dot get and then we'll pass in the title so that will be an input form or an input with the name of title then we'll say author which is request dot form dot get and then we'll pass an author. We'll say if title and author, so if they're not empty, then we will say library dot add books, title and author. And then we will just return, redirect, and say URL for, and then, and then we'll go back to the index. So now we have a way to add we now need a way to delete. So we'll say app.root, and then we'll just create a root for delete, and we'll say forward slash, and now we need to make sure that we're deleting the correct book. So we'll say int 
and then colon and then book ID. And then we'll just say def delete and book ID. And then here we are going to say library dot delete book and then pass in book ID. And then we'll return a redirect to URL four and the index page. So now this is all of our Python logic. If we come over to our index.html, we can actually start creating a way for us to sh show and handle this, but in the front end. So if we delete our hello world and we say HTML5, we'll just change this to be library. And then after the title, we are going to link to Bootstrap so that we can actually use some inbuilt styling. So we'll say link https forward slash forward slash stackpath dot bootstrap cdn dot com and we'll just say bootstrap four point five point two CSS and then we want to link to the minified version. And then down here just to make sure it's working, we'll create <clears throat> Um, a div with a container and we'll say margin top margin top five and then if we come back over to here and we just make sure that everything's running still we refresh if we inspect and then come down to here margin top five you can see that there is actually a margin and it's using three rem which is perfect so that is the mt5 um, and then if we come back into this container, we now need to handle the form inputs. So we'll create a heading one, just so it's a way of being able to understand what it is we're doing. So we're in a library. We'll create a form that has an action of URL four, and then this is going to be add, and we'll say, method is equal to post um, we also need to make sure that we have inside of this app.root we need to make sure that we have a method so we'll say methods is equal to post and then inside of this form we just need three different input fields so one will be a title one will be an author and then one will actually be a submit button so we'll say div dot form group and then inside this we'll just say input of text the name will be title we can remove the id we'll say class form control and then placeholder book title and we'll make sure it's required and then again div form group will say input text again and this will have an, uh, a name of author we'll also give it a class of form control and then placeholder of author and again we'll make it required and then here we'll just say button submit We'll give it a class of btn and btn primary and then we'll just say add book so now we have a form we should be able to actually see perfect we are now able to type in both and if we click add book it will actually add it to the library but we don't have a way of showing what's in the library currently so if i refresh this and come back over to my index at the bottom here after the form we are going to create a UL and we'll say list dash group and margin top of four. So now in this, we want to for each through all the books that are in the library. So we'll say for book in books. Now this books is obviously what's being passed in um, here. So we are getting all the books and then displaying it inside of this um, for each. So now we'll create an LI that will have list group item. 
we say deflex justify content between and align items center and then we'll create a div and we'll say strong book title by um, book.author so now this will display the title obviously and then by the author's name and then outside of the div we want to create a button so that we can actually delete the book from the library so we'll say a href and we'll point to the delete um, root and now we need to pass in the book id so we'll say book underscore id is equal to book dot book id and then after this we will give it a class of btn and then btn danger and we'll just say btn small and then we'll just pass in delete so now if i come back to here and refresh we don't actually see anything output but if i add a title so we'll say test and then by chris add library object has no attribute add books Oh, it's add book, that's why. So we need to change that to book and then refresh. So now we have what was inputted added below. So if I just say learn to code, beginner's code, add book, and then we delete the test, we have a fully functioning library that all works in the front end. Hopefully this has helped you grasp how we can use object-oriented programming and Flask logic to create a fully functioning library that handles creating and deletion. If you learned something today, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to see new videos coming. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.